cancer um, associations and um, I certainly know that Jean Mossman was involved when she was the chief executive of um, Backup, Cancer Backup. There's a very different experience between countries in the UK. Um, HTA has had a long history already, if we can talk about long history, of uh, uh, patient involvement in HTA. And I think over the years, NICE and the patient community and the regulators have discussed a thorough process and have described that very transparently at which stages of the HTA process patients can be involved. In Germany, as a, as a comparison, I think we are pretty much in an infancy on that. At the moment, there are certain points where patients can be involved and accredited patient organizations can send representatives to the hearings and they are also involved in some kind of uh, committees on the, uh, during, the, during the flow of HTA assessment. But I would say at the moment, it is not 100% transparent who can participate, when they can participate and especially how they can contribute. The Irish government don't look at medicines for rare conditions in a diff through a different lens. They, they assess them in exactly the same way as they would assess a treatment for diabetes or a treatment for asthma. And I suppose there's a certain, you know, a lot of the assessment processes used by our HTA authority are good and, and they do look at, at, you know, the efficacy. They look at other areas, they look at cost effectiveness. Um, but we would suggest that, you know, we need patient involvement there more than ever because a high cost treatment is never going to be cost effective, particularly an orphan drug. And so we need to look at you know, the ethics around access for patients. Um, and I think that again is another example of where patient involvement is really important. <laughs>